Hello guys, my name is uh, Joseph Galbicka. I'm going to be doing a small sermon today on John 6, where we have the feeding of the 5,000. Um, I'm going to go all the way from John 6 to about John 30, I believe, yes. So first, before we get into it, um, let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Jesus, uh, Holy Spirit, and God, we pray that you would um, open our eyes to this message, and uh, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would enlighten us by the powerful uh, realizations through your word. Let this uh, realizations and contemplations and all the things that you give us open us um, up to change our behavior and let it align uh, with your godly will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, the first thing I titled was, the title that I titled my sermon today is Correctly, Correct God, correct godly motives based on our mission of being Jesus' disciples and making disciples that want to make disciples. It starts in uh, John 6, 1. This is where it starts. After these things, Jesus went his way over the Sea of Galilee, which is Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Then Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now Passover, now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing that a great multitude came unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may, may take a little. Then said unto him, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. There is a little boy here which hath five barley loaves and two fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place. Then the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, and gave to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were satisfied, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the broken meat, which remaineth, that nothing be lost. Then they gathered it together and filled twelve baskets with the broken meat of the five barley loaves, which remained unto them that had, that had eaten. Then the men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him to, take, to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. When evening was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And now it was dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose with a great wind that blew. And when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing near unto the ship. So they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then willingly they received him into the ship, and the ship was by, and by at the land, whither they went. The day following, the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other ship there, save that one wherein his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples in the ship, but that his disciples were gone alone, and that there came other ships from Tiberias near unto the place where they ate the bread, after the Lord had given thanks. Now when the people saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? And this is where it gets very interesting. Verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye, ye saw the miracles, but because ye ate of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat that endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe, him, believe in him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then? that we may see it and believe thee. What doest thou work? Not that, I don't know, the day before they just saw 5,000 pieces of the miracle the day before. 
All right, so that's where I want to stop. And this is the reasons why I titled the title Correct Godly Motives Based on Our Mission of Being Jesus' Disciples and Making Disciples That Want to Make Disciples. So what we learned, we should, we should um, don't be concerned about earthly needs, food, or things. It's a kind of like a form of idolatry as well, or covetous. This crowd, people, that came to seek Jesus, didn't even care about the miracle. They wanted more food. It's kind of prideful, selfish, you know, that um, old man nature that we're born in, that sinful nature, which is all about me, myself, and I. It says, um, I believe, you know, the gospel is the food of our minds and spirit beyond daily. This is what Jesus was trying to uh, convey to them. Don't just be concerned about the food that you need on a daily basis for the physical body, but be more concerned about my gospel, sharing it to others for a spiritual, eternal purpose. What, what must we do? Believe in Jesus. He will grant you a new born-again spirit that has a humble heart, based on godly, eternal motives. Like when we see someone that is homeless, without food, physical needs. You know, you see someone on the side of the road, we, we feel empathy for them, right? Because, you know, if we were hungry, we'd want someone to feed us, no matter what the circumstances were, if it was our fault they got us there or not. Jesus seeks us to seek Him, to grow our hearts in Him, and He in us, so that we can see others others spiritual need of him as well eternal need what do i mean by that i'll try to explain it you know we we can see other people that are in need physically it's not that hard with our physical eyes with these bodies i get it but more so we should be more concerned about what jesus is trying to imply here don't just be concerned about what a food necessary necess um, a food need for your physical body be more concerned about his his kingdom coming and the, our duty as disciples that seek to make disciples that want to make disciples. Why? Because this is the duty that Jesus gives us as his disciples. You know, the love of God was shown to us by um, allowing Jesus to die on the cross. He went willingly. Holy Spirit came and now um, gives us the ability to discern the word the way that he, se he seeks us to and then to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but also caring about other people, not just based on, uh, well, I guess one, one could almost say common sense necessities. You know, some people just want to hear. Some people want to want other people to just listen, care more about not just um, what other people need or what you would want, but sit down and talk to that person when you when you know something's wrong with them, their smile is not as strong anymore. It's a little there's something behind it. Try to care more about um, that and their actual need, and then have a chance to open up the gospel to them. How can we apply this? Care more, listen more to all. In prayer, ask God, Jesus, to enable your motives on His motives and desires of love of peace, of patience, and kindness, and gentleness, self-control, and sharing the gospel. You know, I think we've all had incidences in our life where we've had wrong motives, our intents are not in line with the Word of God, and I don't think um, we can condemn these people, per se. That's between God and, and them. But Jesus knew their heart. I'll read it again to really hone in on it. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, because ye saw with your eyes, you saw the miracles, but because ye ate of the loaves, you were filled. And they were more concerned about getting some more food. And Jesus says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat that endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Bestow your labor and pain. Everyone has responsibilities every single day. Truly, we all do. Husbands, fathers, we're um, brothers and sisters, we're employees, we're bosses. But Jesus wants us to go beyond just those titles and to truly have motives based on his kingdom, which is coming. And that's our eternal title. And that's um, eternal brothers, sisters towards each other. And then his disciples. And um, that's 
that's seeking him for a one-on-one -on -one relationship in his word. You got, I mean, you got to... You got to refresh your mind, just like these bodies need food. Well, our spirit, our spirit in our mind helps. Renew it by the power of the Holy Spirit which dwells within us. What do I mean by that? Well, food comes in our body, nutrition gives us energy. The same thing, this, with the world we live in now, this refreshes your spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. On a daily aspect, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, just like a regular relationship with a human being, brother and sister, father, son, friend to friend. This, this is spending time with God every single day. And He'll open up your mind to a point where, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that, God. Thank you so much. Now I know why and how I can, how I can handle the circumstance or the situation with this person. And then He'll give you, staying on topic, He'll give you the motives and the intents and the works, not just believe. Yes, we believe in Jesus. That's number one. That is key. But then he'll give you how you can help someone else. You know, talking to someone on a on a level that he wants you and he he knows that you know them. You know, some people. Uh, there's a great verse. It says, um, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." Some people clam up with uh, when there's three people in the room. But then all of a sudden, that other person leaves. Then that other person starts speaking more truthfully to the other person. It's because they trust that person. And if you really listen to someone's words and behind it, then you can really, by the power of the Holy Spirit who gives you the gift of discernment, you can really understand where they need prayer in. And then they trust you more and more, so it gives you more of an opportunity to uh, tell them about the love of God that's in Jesus Christ and so that they can start this relationship. Don't try to force Jesus on someone. He'll allow you to express Him, but He doesn't need your help. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that works through us that will soften someone else's heart. It's not forcing any type of uh, religion down someone's throat. No, it's, this is a relationship. So getting back to the topic on hand, this is how um, I want to end it. Let's try to care more. Let's try to ask the Holy Spirit, you know, where are my intents? Where are my motives? I don't want to just be uh, a, a Christian based on um, you, you helping me that one time and then walking away. No, I want I want to be I want to be an actual follower of you, Jesus Christ, that will help others, not just so my eyes can see someone else, and oh they have a need and then just fill the need. But then what about what about their eternal spiritual need, that's going to prevent them from going to hell, not just this twenty four hour period based on food, you know. Think about the internal implications. Think about your eternal titles. Think about their eternal. If you were them, would you want that person, which was you? To come talk to you about Jesus, especially if it's an eternal, like an eternity amount of time, not just a daily thing. Or, oh, thanks for the five dollars, thanks for the food. You know, saying a prayer for them. You know, uh, starting an actual relationship with others and really becoming disciples of Jesus Christ, sharing you know what you've gone through and um, meeting up one one day out of the week or or an hour, or talking to someone, having a habitual, continual relationship, and asking them where they're at in their walk and if you have any questions about this and that let's get together maybe do a bible study and really get serious about being disciples and getting on the page of god's kingdom and doing his work and the only way we do his work is by number one believing in jesus and having and seeking a relationship in his word every day and he will reveal more and more what he seeks for you to be seeks for you to do and that's just sharing his love not forcing his love sharing his love and uh, he'll use your your present circumstances, no matter what title you are, brother, sister, no matter what family you were born into, he'll use all of those titles for his advantage. And that's where it really gets deep, but it also gets really interestingly fun. You'll understand why he actually bore you into the family that he bore you into. You know, you are a brother and sister or son or daughter, but the, your, eternal, your eternal title is a son of the living God and a brother and sister towards other people, a brother and sister towards other sons and daughters of God. And if you really get closer and closer in a you know, relationship with Jesus, he'll show you why he bore you in the family that you were born into, not just for your benefit, but also for theirs as well. And obedience is really good when it comes to a habitual relationship. Obedience is also a form of trust. Jesus trusts us with his work. And that is such an honorable obligation and such a beaut. Just beautiful. So let's say a prayer real quick that uh, Jesus would give us the intents of his heart and conform us to um, 
to his will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this um, this story that you shared to us in the, in the gospel. Lord, we know that these 5,000 might not have had their intents and their motives that were based on you, and they were only thinking about like the food. Lord, we, uh, we seek your intents and your motives in our minds and our hearts and our souls so that we can do your work. We are not the Holy Spirit. We, uh, we just want to, we want to be your voice and give us the words, control our emotions, control our feelings as we represent you as ambassadors with the correct motives and intents to, to seek your will. No matter what title, no matter what circumstances, our bosses, our husbands, our wives, our brothers, our sisters, whatever it may be, we don't force you on. We, we might get our feelings hurt here and there, but you know, it's, it's okay that we suffer. We, we want to do your work, Father, and it's only by the, your power that works through us that we're able to do it. It's this beautiful gift of faith that you've given us, and that comes by you and not by us. Lord, we learned a lot from this small little story, and we seek, we truly seek like what you said, and that's to not labor for the meat which perisheth, but we seek for the meat that endureth unto everlasting life, which you will give unto us. Lord Jesus, we pray that um, you would envelop us with more um, patience and kindness and self-control and gentleness and just grant to us your heart more and more with all these different relationships that you have us in. But let us dwell more on your eternal kingdom, Father, that is coming, our eternal titles, not just these earthly ones. Let us be more concerned about being ambassadors for you and your army and for your kingdom, Lord, to help others see your love. Give us the ability to do all this, Father. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little sermon. I love you. I pray that um, God would use you in your um, circumstances and your situations and your titles and um, where you're at to help others. You know, I never realized what I'm about to say so strongly uh, recently. And that's wherever you are in your life, it's because God has you where you where you are. But he wants to use you where he has you. The problem is, is he chose to not use you if you don't want to be used. He doesn't force himself on us. It's a very interesting um, anomaly, but once you start to realize that you're able to be used and you just let him flow through you and all these different circumstances and relationships, that's when it's it becomes such an honor that to share a few words or to listen to someone to be in the ear and to, to share the gospel and what God's done in your life and to see like their mind, like in their brain and their heart, see the Holy Spirit work through them and it just becomes such an honor to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It truly, truly does. You um we need to realize like yesterday was Memorial Day and we we have such a freedom when it comes to living in this country, but more than that, we have a freedom to be the sons of the living God. Such liberty such beauty and we have a duty though we have an honor and an obligation a responsibility to be used where god has us for a reason to seek him more and more all he wants is a relationship but we do yes we do have a responsibility it's an honorable one though it's like a it's a kind one it's I mean, the living god wants to use you where you are to share more of him Love you guys. Um, I'm going to be doing, uh, like I said, another video more of these here and there. But you know, let's end with the fact that I believe in Jesus more and more by a habitual daily relationship in his word. And then always ask him for more guidance by the power of the Holy Spirit that will envelop you to help you out with your intents and your motives. And to um, think more about eternal perspectives and helping others. Love you guys.